I had been rereading all my touchstone books, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, and then I started reading Hermit Hesse, Siddhartha, The Story of the Buddha, and my favorite, Journey to the East. I was still looking for those big answers, or at least looking for signs to get me back to where I started, and searching for something I lost, the desire to care. And I finally saw their connection. They'd all taken an inner journey, sure, but in searching for depth, I'd ignored the surface. They all actually went somewhere. Uh, Montana, Las Vegas, San Francisco. And I needed my Mecca. So I'm sitting in my dentist's office one day, flipping through a ski magazine, and I see this picture of Pikes Peak, Colorado, 14,000 feet of grandeur. And at the bottom was this city, Colorado Springs, elevation 6,035 feet. It's beautiful. Now, I'd never been there, and I didn't know a soul there, but within three months, I had saved some dough, bought my mom a parakeet to keep her company. And on a muggy September night, I loaded up my 1970 Cougar with just the essentials. My books and records and clothes, including a pair of shiny black new cowboy boots, two pairs of Levi's, all my, uh, my favorite books, and of course, my amp and my bass. I went looking for the true spirit of the West, this land, this American land. I left at midnight, heading due west on the interstate, then west by northwest on a two-lane blacktop through the Caliche Hills and stern German towns. The sun dawned over my right shoulder and chased me all day long. As I approached the Edwards Plateau, the primordial humidity of my home, heavy and burdensome, gave way to the crisper, drier ether of the West. The green and brown hills flattened in the chalky mesas in shades of white and gray, gleaming in the September sun. The sky seemed so much bigger all of a sudden. I knew I had a long haul through the panhandle, so I had a lot of time to think about the change in me, the change in my friends, the change in America. It was 1980, and Ronald Reagan's message was winning. But I had to let all that go and concentrate on my path. It was like Hesse said in Journey to the East, for the goal was not only the East, or rather, the East wasn't just a country or a geographical location, but it was the home and youth of the soul. It was everywhere and nowhere. It was the union of all times. Like Columbus, I would find the East by heading West. As I crossed into New Mexico, the Rockies came into view. As I moved into Colorado, the mountains were to my left, stretching north forever. I slowed the cougar down a bit and lit a joint to enjoy the view. Now to my right were the great plains of America, miles and miles of ripe wheat fields waving in the evening wind. Amber waves of grain. And as those hues of sunset filled those spacious skies, the majestic pink granite mountains glowed purple. Purple mountains majesty. I saw it. Well, I got into town after dark, and in the morning, I beheld Pike's Peak. I got a job within a week as a maintenance man with his free apartment overlooking this beautiful pond in the very shadow of the mountains. And I worked and played and joined a few rock bands and played in a reggae band for a while, but we really just got stoned and jammed all night. And then on a lark, I answered an ad for a country band. I loved it. It was genuine and simple, and they liked it. I was from Texas. And we played all the big places, too, uh, the Whiskey River Lounge, the Elbow Room, the Come On In. 
We were playing one night at the merry-go-round club. I'll never forget it. We had old Dave on drums. Now, Dave was born and raised in the mountains from a long line of trappers and guides. And he would drink a fifth of whiskey every night. He would keep it in a bag by his drum kit and pour it in between songs into a coffee cup and sip it and drink it down. By the end of the night, it was gone, right? And we had old Johnny Surf on guitar. And Lorelei, a great fiddler and singer, was our special guest. And as we were starting the third set, she comes up to me and she says, uh, Hey, yeah, uh, you know that song, I'll Fly Away? And I said, uh, yeah, sure, yeah, I love that song, but I never played it. Uh, uh, what key should we play it in? She said, you can play any key you want, darling, but I'm singing it in G. Can you do the low part on the chorus? I said, yeah, sure. Uh, so we started the song. I'll fly away, oh, glory. I'll fly away in the morning. Oh, I had found the true spirit of the West in this music. I thought of that day in church and the lady with the butterscotch hair and the Wetmore train. I was finally at peace. I was home. And then the song ended. And Dave picks up his brushes and starts the Orange Blossom special. Uh, you know the train song? First, the brushes were the wheels on the track. Chick -a -chick -a -chick -a -chick -a and then uh, the bass was the thunder of the locomotive. Doom, 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 doom. Then the guitar. And then Lorelei was the fiddle with the train whistle. Yeah! I was a real cowboy now. I was stomping those shiny black boots, and I was in heaven. But then when we hit the bridge, um, some guy said something to a lady and a fight broke out. It's a bar, it happens. But then some other guy jumped in to help his friend. Another guy jumped in to help his friend. And then some others came in for the hell of it. And before we knew it, the whole place had erupted into this huge barroom brawl. There was bottles breaking, just overhead. Glass flew over my head, chairs breaking, punching. We all stopped, we didn't know what to do. I looked back at Dave. Dave's just poured a little whiskey into his cup, sipping it, surveying the scene, grinning. So he slowly puts down his cup, picks up the brushes again, and starts his song faster. And he looks at me and winks, and I just uh, shrugged my shoulders and jumped in. Then the guitar. We all looked at Lorelai, and she just giggled and hopped on board. Now we were the soundtrack for the biggest barroom brawl in history. We kept playing until the cops came and cleared out the joint. Then I sat on the edge of the stage and helped Dave finish his cheap hooch as he told me about his life in the mountains with harsh living and harsh men. And I wondered, what is the true spirit of the West? Is it hard and unyielding like the mountains that define it? Or is it gentle and beautiful? like the soft whoosh of an April breeze bending wildflowers in a mountain meadow, simple and profound? Or is it profane and violent like the men who shaped it? Uh-oh, now I'm confused again. Well, I reckon uh, there's some more changes coming around the bend.